And we're live in what feels like a six-month-long break. But welcome to another 60 Minutes of Unscripted.net Entertainment. You may know this particular hosting crew from the .NET Docs show. Um, after some minor refactoring, we're relaunching on .NET Live today. I'd like to welcome all of our viewers here uh, to this updated format of the show. Our mission here is to empower the .NET community to achieve more. I'm your host, Scott Eddy, with co-hosts Myra Wenzel and Luis Quintanilla. I'd like to welcome today's guest, who we're super excited to have here, Jesse Liberty. Jesse, could you briefly just introduce yourself to the audience? Uh, sure. Uh, I'm not sure what I should say about myself. Uh, I've been programming for about 30 years. I have a dozen books on programming couple dozen videos, uh, started C-sharp in 2000, have never turned back, and you can't make me, uh, and uh, uh, been .NET since .NET. Yeah, and uh, so Jesse has indeed written a few books. In fact, I was cleaning out my office over the weekend and noticed I had a C-sharp book from Jesse, which was pretty cool to see. Uh, happy to have you on the show. Luis, uh, my understanding is we have a doc to showcase today. Why don't we jump into that? Let's do that. All right, let me actually share my screen here. Uh, that would have been good to do during that break. Um, so if you are not familiar, if this is the first time that you're joining us, or if maybe you had joined us when we were at the .NET Doc Show, uh, you may be familiar with this segment here, which uh, used to be called, uh, you know, basically the uh, you know, doc. Um, and uh, now we, it's called the related bits uh, segment. And what we try to do here is we try to show different resources that are out there that are related to the topic that we're going to be talking about today that can include docs, but it's not limited to it as well. Uh, in this case, what we have here is a learn module. So if you go over to docs.microsoft.com slash learn and look for the Use Visual Studio for Modern Development uh, module, you're gonna be able to, to see this here. And what this module does or shows you is how you can get started with Git and GitHub inside of Visual Studio. So if you are a Visual Studio, uh, specifically 2022 user, um, this module guides you through how you can set up your GitHub account and sign in using Visual Studio, uh, how you can get started creating repositories um, in, inside of Visual Studio, as well as pushing the, that repository up to uh, GitHub using Visual Studio. And then last but not least, how you can go ahead and, and make and push commits to the remote branch that you have created on GitHub. Uh, you're going to see here that uh, there's a few prereq prerequisites, uh, some basic understanding of Git, um, at least the concepts and some of the commands. Uh, it's, it's definitely helpful. You're going to need a GitHub account, Visual Studio 2022, uh, preferably uh, this specific version. Um, other things that you're going to see here, there's a series of steps. So it guides you through some of the things that I mentioned earlier, signing into GitHub, uh, creating repositories, committing your changes. And not only are you going to get the conceptual information, but you're also going to uh, actually go through exercises that actually walk you step by step through how to do each of these different tasks. So uh, I believe in the in the banner down there, you can see aka.ms slash onnet live slash learn GitHub BS is where you'll find uh, this particular document. Uh, so with that, uh, let's move on to our guest and the hallway track. All right. It's your time to shine, Jesse. So what are we going to talk about today? <laughs> uh, I had been a command line user of Git for a number of years and would say that the tools that are available, the UI tools, were excellent but uh, you always ran into some limitation. Since Visual Studio 2022, I'm increasingly reluctant to go to the command line because things are so much easier in Visual Studio. Uh, there are a couple of things I haven't yet explored in Visual Studio, and they might come up, but I'm finding that I'm spending most of my 
interactions with Git inside Visual Studio, which is very convenient when you're working on a project. So that's all I have to say. Thank you and goodbye. So let me dig into that a little bit, Jesse. So you had mentioned VS 2022 kind of being the turning point for you. Um, I want to ask, what was it that was added in VS 2022 that wasn't there in previous releases of the IDE with regards to the Git tooling? Right. Okay. I'm going to get yelled at because a lot of things probably were in 2019. But now there's a Git menu that's been pulled up here to the menu bar. And pretty much anything you want to do with your repository or reviewing your branches, we could talk about in detail how those things work. Um, also over in, if I opened up a solution, uh, there would be a get changes that tell you what, uh, what you've changed and you can double click on these guys and see side by side. Uh, this is from a different project, but I'll just show it really briefly. You can see exactly what you've changed and, uh, accept those changes or not. Uh, you can, uh, check in your changes immediately from here right and put your message in commit them all if you do this drop down you can choose uh what you're going to commit or what you want to stash that's very helpful if you uh want to amend your last commit uh you just click amend and put your new message in uh, which is great um there's a whole lot of features now that make using get uh a lot simpler and we could we could start with uh just cloning uh, a, a new, uh, uh, new application. Whoa. Do other people see that cascading <sighs> windows? Um, if I, I go, I'm sorry. Yeah, I do. You said clone and then this ironically. Right. That's funny. The screen was cloned. All right, let me see if I can, uh, bring up something that's less crazy. Uh, I'm not sure how to do that. Is that because I have a screen open, uh, a tab open to StreamYard? Perhaps. Let's try pulling that out of the way. And, okay, here we go. Well, you said live, so you're getting live. Yes. Um, if I go, for example, to GitHub, and I'll just go over to mine. It's set for James Montemagno because I've been learning, uh, uh, Maui through his excellent, uh, resource, uh, his, uh, Maui in a box. Well, let's go to mine, which is much more sparser. And we'll pick one at random. We'll pick a bookstore. And I have a couple options here under clone. I can copy the clone address and then bring up, uh, my, um, terminal mm -hmm. and say, get clone and then just paste that in, which is painless. Um, but I can also do that in Visual Studio, which has some real advantages because it just sets up everything uh, the way you might want it. And um, uh, GitHub is prepared to uh, do the cloning directly into Visual Studio. Why am I... Uh, hang on a second. Let me see what's happened here. Bear with me. I'm sorry. Um, I'm assuming that folks are comfortable with um, Git and uh, GitHub. Is that a safe assumption at this point, do you think? Yeah, let's assume that, Jesse. Okay. Yeah, but one thing I was going to mention when we started is that, like, one of my mentors here, when I started learning Git, like, my, like, this was like seven years ago or so, um, they recommended me that I learn the command line so that I know what's happening behind, like, 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 if, like running, like, like driving a car and then you know what's under the hood. Like, I don't know, <laughs> but, but right. it's like that comparison of understanding what's happening. And with Git, there are so many uh, nuances and things that happen that it's like just trying to understand before you move to like a UI um, right. tooling. Is that something that you recommend as well? It's something I used to recommend, absolutely. Oh, uh, you Actually, used to. There were, right. There were three stages. In uh -huh. stage one, I used to say, let's understand what how Git itself works. 
and let's look at the internals and 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 look at the trees and the blobs and so on. And then I came to the conclusion that you really don't need to know that uh, to be extremely effective with Git, uh, but you do need to know the command line. And the reason for that was that, as you said, it's much closer to what's actually happened. Um, but it turns out that with Visual Studio, things are uh, basically the command line simplified. Uh, simplified is the wrong word. It's the command line made into a GUI, but mm -hmm. one that's uh, so far not very limited. And I'm not sure anymore that you learn more by being in the shell than you do by being in Visual Studio. And um, all of that work that goes into learning the command line I'm not sure you're buying very much if you're new to uh, Git. I think you can use Git for a very long time through Visual Studio without any problem and without struggling with understanding what's going on. Uh, you still need to understand sort of the workflow mm -hmm. of Git, and you, un you need to understand what to push and a pull, and I'm happy to go through those details, but we're sort of assuming that people are comfortable with that. Um, but, but if someone came to me today and said, I don't know anything about Git, and I want to get started, um, I would give them a five-minute overview of what what commits are and and push and pull and some of the major aspects, and then I would take them directly into Visual Studio and show how you do stuff. And and because I don't think Git has to be as big a deal or as scary as as many people make it out to be, and maybe even as it used to be. I think the tools have gotten really really good. Now, Visual Studio is not the only uh, GUI. There's a bunch of GUIs out there, uh, some of which greatly simplify the process but are somewhat limited, some of which do not do that but are somewhat complex to use. I think Visual Studio has hit the right balance. And I can show you that um, I'm in right now in my own GitHub, and if I click on Bookstore, which is just a... Uh, illustration program that I used for one of my blog posts and I go to code which is where I would do my uh, get the URL and put that into the command line instead I can just say open with Visual Studio and uh, what does it want wow that's interesting uh, let's see what I'm I've never seen it do that before. That's really interesting. Okay, well, I'm not going to spend a lot of your time on that, but but what I'm used to happening is that I go to code, I say open this in Visual Studio, and it not only does it clone into a directory, but it also opens Visual Studio on that project, which is nice. Um, let's get out of this and go clone that manually. And you see that I often go back to when when things are not as solid as I expect, um, I'm going to return to the command line because I know that I can get this clone done that way. So let's uh, go to repose. Uh, that where I put it. Uh, source CD repose. Okay, and we had that get clone earlier, so hopefully it's still in there. It is, and we can clone. Okay. I hate working live because <laughs> nothing is going to go right. Um, yeah, it looks like, in, so I can help Jesse here. It looks like you just pasted the wrong well, yes, um, I did. URL there. I pasted the Steam. Uh, let's go back and get the right thing. Uh, come here and go to here. And you know what? Let's try maybe a different one because I think the... Um, Merging into Visual Studio is a nice feature. So let's try C Sharp 7, code, and open with Visual Studio. And no, still asking that. Well, okay, we can certainly grab the uh, uh, URL and go to the command line. I'm not making my case for doing Visual Studio <laughs> instead of the command line. Uh, get clone. There we go. What? Oh, I can't spell. There we go. Now we finally have a, uh, a repository that's local. Um, so let's see. CD, C sharp, 7. And with any luck, 
my files are there, including the directory, my readme, etc. Um, if I go back to Visual Studio, if I can find Visual Studio, let's go here. And I say, let's just stash this away so that we don't have to deal with it. Um, okay. All that was put into my stash, which is just a way of sort of setting it on the shelf, and I'll come back to it later. So if I say file, uh, Notice I can do a clone repository from here as well. Let's say open. Actually, that might be interesting to do. I don't know that I've done that. So clone repository, uh, repository location. So that would be uh, HTTPS, GitHub. Never try something new when you're uh, demonstrating. Okay. And we want to put it into, sure, we'll put it there. And uh, we're going to browse GitHub and say uh, book, which will hopefully find. Um, OK, this is interesting. Haven't worked with it. Not going to try on your time. Uh, let's go back to uh, we're in. Visual Studio, let's open up the one we did download. So we're going to say open project. And we're going to navigate to the project that we just created. This is, by the way, uh, James's uh, Maui stuff, which is great. Um, leave that I put it in. Oops. In repos. And uh, which one were we looking at? We were looking at C-sharp 7, so there it is. And um, let's just pick one of the solutions in there. Sure, let's update the target. Okay, and then that shows here. Great, so now we're at a good starting place. So if I go into my program and I make some change, let's get rid of that, for example, and save it. Then if I come over to the Get Changes window, it's going to show me uh, that this is all brought in and which ones have changes. I can, these are A for added, M for modified. Um, so I can say, all right, let's give that a name. Uh, first uh, uh, commit, terrible name. And um, I'll say commit all. And that is going to put it all into my local repository, and it tells me that I have one to upload. So if I upload that, that's going to upload that to my remote re repository. Let's make another quick change so that we can see that a little cleaner. Save that, and notice immediately it comes up here and says um, that I've uh, uh, made a change to program.cs. Uh, also, we have a deletion and an addition to some index files that we don't care about. But I can go to that modified file, and if I double-click on it, I can see side-by-side side exactly what I changed. I can also go over to Git and do a Git uh, branch history and see what's been done in this branch. Um, so that is nice and convenient and I can see what I have to update to the uh, origin which is nice so all, all I'm really saying here is that it's, it's a it's a full fledged get tool that you can basically do anything in that you could do at the command line but it's but it's fast and clean so I can say for example I can say uh, I think um, we're looking at two different solutions, but I can I can say to this guy, um, show me um, that I want to do my cherry picking here, that I want to reset it um, and keep or not keep the changes. The other thing that I can do is take two of them and I can commit, compare the commits and that will bring them up side by side and show me what's new between them. So there's a whole lot of... Um, 
things that I would normally do at the command line and have to remember the commands and the order and so on. For example, if I have, uh, well, right now we're working in master, which would be a bad idea. But if I come up here and I want to create a branch, so let's say quick branch. Okay, I'm going to say uh, new branch. And it's going to say, what do you want to call it? And I say quick branch. And it's going to say, do you want it based on master or some other branch? For now, I'm going to say quick branch. And I can also check it out at the same time. So I'm going to create that branch. And yes, I'm going to bring my changes over to that branch. And uh, another thing that I can do from here at that point, now that I'm in a branch, do a little bit of work. Let's do a, a simple change. I'm going to stop babbling in about a minute. That's the diff. Let's go over to the Solution Explorer, open up Program CS, and I can make another change. Save that, go back to my Git Changes, see that change, uh, double click on it and do the comparison. And then uh, let's say I'm done with the work I want to do on my branch. I can come down here to my branch and then say uh, change branches to quick branch. Sash the changes. Okay, continue to check out. And then I want to bring master into my quick branch. So we'll make quick. This is a. Uh, Okay, why is it not letting me change branch? Um, oh, interesting. No, stash the changes. That's what I tried to do, but you're not letting me. See how much easier Visual Studio is? It's giving you a warning above. Fails remove, remove, couple. Yes. Valid argument. Okay. Fine. We'll just uh, we'll talk through what it should have been rather than my wasting your time. What you can do is change to the branch that you're working on and then right click on master and say, OK, I want to merge into the current branch. I want to rebase there. I want to view the history of that branch, rename the branch. So there's an awful lot that you can do with just a right click and and uh and or a double click depending on where you are and see the kind of information that typically uh I find harder to remember and use. Um for example, just quickly and then I'll stop babbling as I promised. Um you can uh do blame or history uh very simply right off the menu. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do with just a click and then see it visually rather than, for example, coming down and in my uh, terminal doing a log, which is not as intuitive to understand what's actually going on in those commits as it is when you look at it in Visual Studio. So that that's basically um, uh, not very clear or coherent presentation on why I prefer to work these days in Visual Studio rather than the command line. So, Jesse, uh, thanks for that overview there. I have uh, a couple of questions. I guess the first one that I would start with, um, let me provide a little bit of background before I dive into the question. So when I was trying to learn Git, um, I was using VS Code, and I was trying to use the command line, the, the git CLI, I was very interested in seeing if I execute a certain command from VS Code, VS Code will show me the git commands that are being run. Can I see a similar thing in Visual Studio? Is there some window that will show me the git commands that are being executed when I, for example, change a branch or uh, revert a, to a previous commit? Is there something like that in VS? That's a great question, and I don't know the answer to it. Um, I've never tried to do that. I could see how that would be a good learning tool if you wanted to do the uh, the command line work. Um, I've only used Visual Studio Git commands in and of themselves, 
um, as I made the transition to using Visual Studio rather than using the terminal. I, I've used uh, GitHub Desktop, which is extremely simple to use, but is somewhat limited. And I've used um, uh, Alsatians, uh, I can't remember the name of their um, GUI, which was, uh, it shows you in a more graphic way what's going on, but again, you run into some limitations. And also the graphic way is not, in my opinion, quite as clear as what Visual Studio has to offer. Yeah, for me, the big selling point of using the VS tooling is velocity. If I have to constantly switch from one tool to another to accomplish a task, that's only going to slow me down. If mm -hmm. I can comfortably live within the IDE and do most of what I need there, I should theoretically be more productive. There's less of a hit to the overall developer velocity. I, um, I think that, that that's right, but let me point out that you can hit the terminal from within Visual Studio. So, you know, if you if you really prefer to drop down to the shell temporarily, you can certainly do that from within Visual Studio. But more and more, I'm finding that for Git commands, I'm not doing that. And that's actually a great point. I wonder if we should show our viewers how to do exactly that, to execute a Git command inside of Visual Studio. Uh, from the, the like the git log that you were running before right um okay let's see if i can do that without can you see my screen still or no i think we lost it so you might have to reshare lost it. okay bear with me a second while i find you there we are we'll go to share and i apologize for the beeping everyone like people have been commenting is just something on jesse's mic that we were not able to fix my mic? <laughs> yeah let me try switching mics and see if uh, okay. it's supposed to be a great mic. So I've been reluctant to walk away from it. But if that buzz is definitely coming from me, I could... Yeah, no, and we tried to fix that before the show and we couldn't. Um, and Louise is saying um, that there is a Visual Studio, there's an option to revert commit, so it's awesome. Um, yeah, and I kind of like I I don't want to share my workflow because I, I use something different. I do use Visual Studio. I love the Visual Studio Code interface for for Git, um, and so I tend to use that. And even though my solution is in Visual Studio, so um, so I'm kind of guilty of that. Yeah, I, I think I don't think anybody's proud. Go for it. <laughs> right. I was just going to say. I was going to say that. <laughs> Go ahead. I was going to say, if somebody's say looking over my shoulder, <laughs> I'm executing that's three times. <laughs> okay, go. Cool. We said unscripted. If somebody is looking over my shoulder as I'm executing Git commands, they're probably going to point out several inefficiencies. Like, hey, dummy, there's a better way to accomplish that set of tasks that you just did. You could execute this single command instead of a couple. A lot of it is just um habitual you know i learned uh to use the cli and the cli has evolved since i learned it years ago and so yeah i mean there are efficiencies to be gained there are benefits in talking to others about their their workflows um the other thing i wanted to dig into here jesse and maybe you have an answer maybe you don't um as a cli user of git um I have defined quite a few Git, a, uh, Git aliases, you know, complex commands that for whatever reason I cannot commit to memory. I always have to, you know, go out to Google Bing and search for these commands. Does Visual Studio provide uh, a UI for executing any aliases that you have defined in your Git config file? And I think you're yeah. muted, Jesse. They're saying their mic isn't connected. No, so hopefully. Otherwise, bear with we'll, us while we figure this out. Otherwise, let's go back to BP. <laughs> and Jose, Jose was suggesting that maybe it's like a mobile phone or something near the mic that might be causing the static. So that could be it as well. Maybe 
unmute. No, we cannot unmute him yet. I uh, I think back to the the pain that I experienced months ago, where I was actually broadcasting a local AM radio station on my mic. Thankfully, we were able to sort out that. Um, I'm curious for those in the chat, for our viewers, are there any um, Git tips that you have for using Visual Studio. I do, I do see some coming through here. I'd say keep those coming and we'll share some of those with the, the other viewers. Let's see here. It still says Jesse is. Yeah, I'm with Myra on, on sort of not sharing my Git workflows. I'm not <laughs> particularly proud of them. They work. Yeah, no, and so I, I just it, as learned, long as they work right. I just learned the other day because every time, <laughs> like, I know that even Visual Studio Code and Visual Studio, you can check out new new branches from the the IDE, but I just do git checkout uh, dash b, and then I I just learned there is a shorter command for that. Um, yes. And so, um, it's just like amazing how many things you can learn and still not done, be done with learning git. And right. So. The, the the thing with Git is that, in my opinion, people overcomplicate it and over worry about it. And that if you can get your work done, and and it, and as you were talking about velocity, if it, if you can make it so that it doesn't get in the way, then I think you have a much bigger win. And that's part of the reason I'm switching to Visual Studio. Is you stay in the IDE, you can do what you need to do. You, Aliases are really a way to solve the problem of long command lines on, on uh, long command line uh, commands. How's that for, for a phrase? Um, so yes, I've I've used that. I have a git log, for example. Let's see if I have a chance of this working. I'm really wanting to start over today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let me see if I bring up my command line and I say this was the original git log. But I've created a uh, an alias that looks like this, so I can color code. I, I chose one line. Just, yeah, uh, I think that the command it's uh, hovering over the um, uh, stream here. Do you want to minimize the tab in the background so you don't get that sort of feedback? How's yeah, that? Perfect. That works. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So what I was showing here was this is the original log. This is my alias that um, that does a number of things. It color codes it. It tells me the uh, the short version of the um, uh, come on, what's the word um, of the commit hash there? Like hash, the shot. Thank you. Yeah, 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 of the SHA. Thank you so much. Then it shows me what I'm doing. It shows me when I did it, who did it. Um, and all in one line each. And this comes out of a simple alias so that I, all I have to type is get LG. And similar to what you were saying, for checkout dash B, I have one that says get CB. And uh, then you just tell it what you mm -hmm. want to check out. And I have one that is for checking in that uh, will check in and also ask you to enter the message. And then, you know, you can also combine that with push. But all of these aliases are designed to solve the problem of the command line of having all of these commands that are hard to remember and, and the order and so on. Uh, for example, when you do a merge, if you want to merge master into your branch, you really don't want to merge your branch into master, although if you set up properly, it wouldn't be possible. But you, but keeping that order, is it branch source destination or branch destination source? Or, you know, do I need a double dash on my flag or a single dash on my flag? That all goes away when you're letting Visual Studio take care of that for you. And so, so to me, that's a big win. Okay, so let me dig into that then. Um, so let's say I'm living in this world where I'm using both uh, Visual Studio and the command line uh, for mm -hmm. my Git workflow for whatever reason. Uh, maybe it depends on the team that I'm working with. Mm -hmm. Is there a way, though, to execute those aliases within Visual Studio, within a, a UI uh, element? Can I, I like, not, click not, and execute? 
I'm not quite sure what that would mean. You can open up terminal and use your, uh, your shortcuts. You can create shortcuts in Visual Studio. Um, but I don't know that Visual Studio can read the, the get config file and, and, um, I don't know where you would execute those shortcuts, uh, except at the terminal. Yeah. And I, again, I don't know if this exists. If not, it's a great Visual Studio extension idea for somebody. Well, where, where would you do it though? Where would you put in your alias? Where would you physically um, enter it? So what I'm, what I'm envisioning is a window, uh, like your find results window or, you know, some window down towards the bottom of the IDE mm -hmm. that will read in any uh, aliases that are defined in your git config. Mm -hmm. And you could right click each of those aliases and a context menu would appear and allow you to run those commands. That output would be piped to Visual Studio, potentially in that same window, and you would see the the commands running, just like mm -hmm. if you were to execute that alias from the the uh, shell that you had open prior to Visual right. Studio. Right. Um, not a hundred percent sure I followed exactly what that would look like, but it it does sound like a good uh, candidate for an extension. The one that I really like that you brought up was the idea of having Visual Studio. Uh, you use the 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 window. You use excuse me the the drop downs and do something and have a window down here that shows you what the command line would be to get that. Yep. And that sounds to me like a terrific extension because many people do want to use command line for different things, and it would be a great way to learn the command line. Um, the way I learned TypeScript was there was a uh, playground on the web where you could put in JavaScript, and on the other side it would show you the TypeScript, or vice versa, you put in TypeScript and it would show you the JavaScript that came out of that. Um, so, so having that kind of translation side by side would be very valuable, I think. And I think this goes back to something Myra said earlier in the show, which was, you know, knowing that next level down, the, the IDE is the abstraction, but getting a step closer to that metal is probably a good idea for some folks. Inevitably, something will go wrong in the IDE. Uh, maybe a bug is introduced in the release that you're using, and you know that prevents you from using that UI element to execute a git command. If you could see the git commands that are being executed, you could identify what is that bug um, and you know get around it, hopefully. But without some knowledge of the CLI, it seems... Um, you know, you you could run into a, a bad situation down the road where you're not able to figure out what's going on. My opinion, of course. Am I muted or am I... No, I'm, I'm just muting. We can ah, hear you. I'm okay. just muting sometimes so that it minimizes the beeping. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, I, I'm going to take the risk of disagreeing with you uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, I think that the get... Uh, infrastructure inside of Visual Studio 2022 is, is so mature that the likelihood of running into the kind of bug in its usage of Git is vanishingly small. And secondly, um, learning both is is more cognitive load. Um, if you can just stay in one of them, if in Visual Studio, then you don't have to learn all the Git commands. I think the Git commands in the command line is getting very close to being um, vestigial. Uh, not quite obsolete. Um, certainly, if you're new to Git, I would not I would not teach you the command line because it would be just a, a whole effort to learn. It would be one more thing to learn. Whereas, if you use it integrated into Visual Studio, as long as you've had you know four slides off of off of somebody's deck that says this is what a commit is, this is what a repository is, and so forth. As long as you've got the fundamental concepts which you don't need the command line to get, um, I think you can move forward just in Visual Studio pretty safely for a very long time. Having somebody on your team who's a killer Git uh, person for when you get in trouble is always nice. Um, can I plug my book? Uh, yes. In my uh, book, Git for Programmers, which, by yeah. the way, is got a lot of command line, um, but in the back, it's got uh, what to do when you get into trouble. And I think that that's, that's a key thing of, you know, you've, you've made a commit you didn't mean to make, 
or you put things into the commit that you didn't mean to have in there, and now you're three commits later. How do you back out of that, and so forth? So, so uh, that's a place where the command line might be easier to get to accomplish what you want. Although with the view history in in um, in Visual Studio, there's an awful lot of that that you can do. So I guess thank you for that uh, information and thank you for disagreeing with me. It's always <laughs> nice to have a friendly debate on the show. Um, I'm wondering, has Jesse, have you as you have used the tooling in VS or Git, have you ever encountered a situation where you you told yourself, "Man, I really wish that Visual Studio allowed me to do this particular thing with Git." Have there been any moments like that? I think you're on mute. It wasn't me this time. <laughs> <laughs> Let me unmute him. Let's see. No, now it's like saying it's not connected. We do have some questions in yeah, chat here. That's what I was going to mention. We have one from Jose and one from a friendly psychopath. <laughs> See if we can get Jesse back here, and we'll try to get you answers to those questions. Um, keep the questions coming, and we'll try and get to as many of them as we can. Actually, I see some questions in here. That okay. Are we back? Can we hear us? No. We're back. Can you hear us, Jesse? You're back, but I'm not, because I don't hear you at all. Oh. Well, maybe I can come back another time and do this right. <laughs> um, you were ans asking a really interesting question, and I need to figure out how to hear you, because um, I really want to be able to answer that. Let me uh, play with this for a while. Do we have enough time to do this? I'm running out of time before I can even get there. Okay, can you, uh, you can still hear me, right? Okay, can you ask your question again, please? Uh, what? Oh, no, I would I... love it if I could hear you. God. Oh. Just what is broken here? This is not a good advertisement for the Yeti Blue or for me. I'm not sure why I'm not hearing you. Maybe you should go on and, and continue talking about Git, and when I can hear you, I'll pop back in. Sure. Rather than waiting for me. You can do that. Okay. Let's take a look at some of the questions in chat and see if we can get answers to these. Um, hopefully. Uh, let's see. First question I see here. Is there a way to switch between two or more Git accounts using Visual Studio? I do not know the answer to that, but I do not claim to be an expert in the VS <laughs> Git tooling. Um, my yeah, but I, I, I only have one, but I will follow up and see, like, and try to figure out if there is a way, or if not, let's suggest a feature for that. Because I, I imagine a lot of folks might have, like, a personal and a work account or something that they have to, to do that. Um, I can use my own. Jesse, can you hear us now? I can hear you. Can you hear Yay. me? Yeah. A miracle okay. of technology. <laughs> so let's talk this question over to someone who is much more knowledgeable than myself on this topic. Um, Jesse, and the question here is, is there a way to toggle between two or more Git accounts using Visual Studio? Let's say you have a personal account and a work account. That was the example Myra provided. How would you toggle between those two? Maybe maybe it's possible, maybe it's not. In the same project or or? Um, within the IDE itself, is there right, a way to just... I'm trying to figure out what the use case would be. Is it like I'm in a project and now I want to work in this repo, but in the same project I want to work in a different repo? Yeah, so... It seems like a really like a corner case. Here's a, here's a case I could think of. So I'm uh, working my 9-to-5 job on a team project. I need to use my work GitHub account for that. I go off, eat dinner, and now I want to work on my side project that I do on my personal time. 
Mm-hmm. For that, I would want to use my personal account. Is there a way to switch from work mode to personal mode within Visual Studio? Yes, my understanding to the answer to that is yes. Do you want me to show you how to do it? I'm not quite sure I could do that without, you know, a little bit of looking. Um, but you certainly can open a second project and say, I want this in a different repo. And in fact, uh, as I think about it, that should be automatic because your get config file is going to be in that other project's main directory. And I don't think you have to do anything in Visual Studio. I think that's just going to work. All right. Yeah, Thank and I see on the, on the account window that there is a way to add another GitHub. I haven't tried, so we, we like we would have to test it. Well, you can you can own more than one GitHub account through Visual mm-hmm. Studio, absolutely. Um, and and as you change projects, as I say, the config is going to be picked up and it's going to be working there. So I, I think that's I think that's semi-automatic, uh, non-problem. You started to ask me something before all my technology went kerfluey. Yeah, I can uh, ask that question again, and then we'll get to um, – actually, let's flip that. The question's up on the screen. Let's get to this one first. Okay. Then I'll ask my question again. Um, can we use the move git command in Visual Studio to keep files history while rearranging into new folders and projects? It says – if I move a file, it usually just deletes and creates, and I lose the file history. Yes, my experience is that the problem you're describing is true. That when I move a file, it does a, uh, it does a, when you look in get, it does a delete and add. Um, I will look into whether you can get that file history without that happening and get back to you. But, uh, as far as I know, yeah, it does do that. Okay. Thanks, Jesse. Um, I promised I was going to re-ask my question. My question was, have, has there ever been a point where you were using the Git tooling in Visual Studio and you thought to yourself, you know, man, I really wish I could do this specific Git thing in the VS tooling? Yeah, not so much that quite as you describe it. I, what I have had is I've dropped down to the command line because I know this command. I know it. By heart, I know exactly what I want in that command, and I don't want to go hunting for it in the IDE. So I have done that. And and while you can go to terminal, I typically just keep PowerShell up somewhere on you know a- available so that I can do that quick drop down and make the command. So I haven't made a 100% switch over to Visual Studio. What I'm finding is I'm being drawn more and more into Visual Studio for more and more things. Sounds good. Um, do we have any other questions in the chat? Anything the viewers would like to know about here? Suggest on.net live, sponsor a GitHub series. Yep, but not a terrible idea. Love it. Uh, Got another comment here. This is my most used command that I use with the command line, git reset soft head one, if I have just commit to local and forgot to add something. I wonder, is there a way to easily accomplish this in Visual Studio? Yeah, there is, there is. You can do a git reset very easily in Visual Studio, and you can choose either soft or hard on that reset, and it will do the the right thing. Um, and that's that's right off of the git menu. But usually, usually when I forget to add something, instead of resetting, I usually just append to the last commit. So it's like I do my changes, and instead of doing a new commit, if it's just local, I'll just append uh, to my latest change. Right. So if it's that, your latest change, then what you can do is go back to the same window that you did your commit in, and there's a little checkbox that says amend, and mm-hmm. that's going to, and that's going to give you exactly what you just described. Yeah, I do like the idea of the Visual Studio tooling becoming more of my, um, you know, daily driver tool. I, I think as you go out on sites like Stack Overflow and you, you browse the Git related questions, it quickly becomes obvious that there are multiple ways to achieve the same thing and there's a lack of consensus or agreement on, you know, what is that best way to do that one thing. Uh, Rebasing is is one of those things where 
you go out to Stack Overflow and there are uh, opinions all over the place. Um, where I would go with this then is, is there a way to easily accomplish something like a rebase in Visual Studio? I don't know if that's something we talked about yet. Yes, it's, it's a, a, as easy as doing a merge. Um, you go into the uh, branch that you're in and you pick the branch you want to go into. And you, instead of saying merge, you say rebase and, and it just does it. It's, uh, it's terrific. Um, the advantage of rebasing very briefly is you rebase onto the uh, other branch and therefore you don't show in your history all of these merges that it, you just see the, uh, the commits, which is nice. Um, I, I don't want to get into the religious wars about is rebasing better <laughs> than merging. Um, what I, what I will say is that my philosophy for what it's worth is to, uh, find the simplest and most obvious way to accomplish what I want, uh, rather than look how cool this is. I can, you know, I can string this command into that command. And then if I do this funny thing, then I get what I want. And because then, you know, I mean, if you want to be a get geek, you probably do want to stay at the command line. But if you're, if you're a, a working programmer who just wants Git as a tool, then I think Visual Studio gives you an awful lot of what you want. I sound yeah. like a shill from Microsoft, but I, but I, uh, uh, I'm gonna, I do find that to be true. I'm gonna say most of us as developers probably don't aspire to be Git purists. We, we <laughs> want exactly what Jesse has described. The simplest possible way to accomplish whatever it is we're trying to do. Uh, but I will say that's, that's true for myself. So we do have a couple more questions coming into the chat here. One is related to squashing commits. I will put that question up on the screen. Can you use VS 2022 to squash multiple commits into one suitable commit for a pull request? I'm sorry, can you give me that one one more time? Sure. Uh, so uh, squashing commits. If we wanted oh. to use VS 2022 to squash, let's say, two or three commits into a single commit for yes. a pull request? Yes, so in other words, a rebase interactive, an interactive rebasing. And yeah. yes, you can do that very simply in Visual Studio. It's, it's yeah. very straightforward. Now, that's a good case where, yes, you can do it simply in, in Visual Studio, but my fingers want to do it in Terminal because <laughs> – because in terminal, it's just, you know, get rebase dash I, and then uh, VS Code comes up, and it has really nice support for, for squashing and for um, adding and deleting. So that's, I have, that one I have not yet integrated in my uh, working in Visual Studio, but yes, it can be done. All right. Next question. Let's move right along here. Is commit amend slash append? The same as an interactive rebase with the F fix up option. You're making me cry. <laughs> <laughs> the answer to that one is I don't know. And that is yeah. a perfectly fine answer. Yeah, because I would say, like, I've never used the F option. I usually do S for squash or D for delete. So I don't, I don't know what the fix up does. But I imagine that would be the same, like, if you squash two commits into one like i don't know that's how i think i think of a pen but it, i would have to look into fix up to like properly answer that you and me both yeah and that is one i have not used either what about you luis any knowledge of this option no uh i i don't uh i haven't heard i didn't even know that fix up was even an option i like my just uh either squash or uh or d right I'm going to propose that we add a phone a friend segment to the show. Or we, we, or we are given the ability to live on the show call somebody about this. Uh, Who would you call? That, that, that question is a, is a really question. good example of um, of being a, a, a gethead, which is, you know, maybe a good thing to be. It certainly is. And I want one on my team. But, but that's the kind of uh, advanced command line thing that I just, I can't get excited about because I want to pay attention to my C-sharp program. At least as long as we still need C-sharp programmers before AI puts us out of work. Okay, and right. Jacob is kind of enough to let us know that fix up is the same as squash, but it ignores the commit message. So yeah, it would be the same um, because it just reuses 
the message from the previous commit when you do an append or amend. Amend. Amen. Cool. We did have one more question. I know Jesse addressed this uh, early on in the show. Let's pull it up again and we'll talk some more about it. Um, so this question is all about does Jesse recommend or do any of us for that matter recommend learning Visual Studio and its tooling over the git command line? And I think Jesse mentioned a couple of times now that for the beginner to git, um, he would not recommend the command line. Um, do you want to talk a little bit more about the why there, Jesse? Sure. Um, yes, you have what I'm saying correct, although I think you can go on for a very long time without learning the command line. And the, and the reason that I say that is that the, the, the DS uh, support is going to do nearly everything you could do at the command line. It, it may be that it can do everything. I just don't know. But it certainly could do nearly everything. And you could, you could work on a project for a very long time before you say, oh, I wish I knew how to do that at the, at the command line. And learning the command line is non-trivial. Um, so it's not just, oh, I'll go look up the command and do it. It's it's a quick trip to Stack Overflow. Whereas on Visual Studio 2022, I find that uh, things are much more intuitive of how to do them. And, and I get a much quicker response in terms of uh, not having to go out and ask and get uh, expert. So yes, if if I if I were new to Git, I would certainly not learn the command line uh, first, and conceivably not ever. Yeah, I would say you know to add to what Jesse said there, a lot of people I've worked with in the real world will tell me, hey, I don't know Git, and now you're asking me to become a command line user as well. I, I'm not comfortable there. I'd rather live in the IDE. So it's it's yet another barrier, another source of friction. You're throwing out onto the, the road in front of that person. Um, as Scott Hanselman would say, this is the yak shaving that the developer didn't come to do. They, they set out to accomplish something, you know, building that line of business application, solving that particular problem in there. Wrestling with Git isn't something they, they got out of bed to do today. Um, You're going to have to tell me afterwards what Scott said about yak shavings. I haven't heard that. <laughs> oh, it, I believe there's a blog post about it. Wouldn't uh, surprise me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if there's a, a blog post worth reading, chances are Scott is the author of that blog post. Um, I wanted to point out that we're at time for today's show. Uh, thank you to all of our viewers for watching this um, reinvigorated, relaunched episode of On.NET Live. As a reminder, you can check out our other great .NET Live TV streams and videos, so the recordings, out at dot.net slash live. Yes, Myra, I just plugged your website. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, be sure to tune in next Monday, so we will stream each and every Monday. Uh, next Monday, we will have guest Christopher Strube, who will join the show to talk about wrapping browser APIs with uh, Blazor WebAssembly. So if you're interested in Blazor at all, this is a must-attend show. That's all we had for today. And again, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. My quick apologies for the technical difficulties, but it was great being here. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. See everyone next week. Thank <laughs> you.